I have my laptop here. I've got a blank notepad and a timer for one hour. I'm going to show you how to come up with a research topic in less than one hour. Let's go. The first step I'm gonna recommend is that you just start listing your interests, not even research topics right now, just things that you're interested in. Remember in my previous video on how to define the best questions for economics research, I wanted you to make a contribution and I wanted you to do something that you're interested in. So let's go ahead and figure out interests that we have before we start going into what the contributions are gonna be. Contributions come way, way later. Let's list interests first. So I just took a few minutes to write down some topics that I have and the way I was focusing my interests were on the things that I would like to know more about, something that I would like to become an expert in. So the first step on my list was YouTube because you know here we are on YouTube. I'm trying to get better at making YouTube videos and understanding YouTube and I really don't think that there are people who are investigating the economics behind YouTube and I think that might be an area where I could make a contribution. But you know, again, most of this right now is what are you interested in? So YouTube was a natural fit, given that we're talking on YouTube right now. One of the other things I started thinking about was developing countries and Haiti. Haiti is where my research is in economics as a professor. And so, of course, I want to develop that a little bit more. I also put down cell phones. Cell phones, I kind of see as like working with all of those with, you know, people are consuming YouTube on their cell phones. You know, how have cell phones affected de developing countries or specifically in Haiti? I'm trying to think of that's some technology I think is interesting. Again, I also have some other research that deals with cell phones and their effects on society. So I decided to just throw that in there in case there were some research ideas that I wanted to pursue. Then I started putting some things I thought like, they're starting to get bigger and maybe I wanna make sure that I understand those things. So that way, if I have opportunities to work in those spaces that I'm there. So I put video game economics just because I think with Fortnite, uh, you know, maybe Fall Guys, I haven't seen much economics on there, but with what's coming in video games, it feels like that space is gonna get bigger much quicker. And so I thought maybe I wanna be ahead on that. Same with crypto and video games. I've seen some companies that are involved in crypto currencies and blockchain and how that's gonna affect video games. I don't think there's that much work there and it's something I'm kind of interested in. So I might want to pursue that. And then I put Pokemon, not quite as a joke, but um, I just feel like, you know, my kids love Pokemon. It comes up all the time at home. I just thought like, oh, are there any like research questions about Pokemon that I could put in there? So you can see that I don't have like specific research topics yet. Right now it's just, what are the things that I'm interested in? What are the things that I'd be willing to go and put some time into to try and learn and to try and contribute? Now I want to go ahead and go under each of these and just start thinking of some questions that I have in there. What are some research topics that come to mind as I start listing out these topics and I'm just gonna you know give a couple of minutes to that let me just see what comes as I am looking at this and thinking about the questions so now I have about 20 different questions that are related to these topics that I'm interested in and the way that I came up with them were just like just questions that came to my mind. Um, I think the funnest one was down at the Pokemon topic. I I played the Pokemon card games with my son and I'm always thinking like, what's the game theory involved here? And like, what are the best cards? Which cards would you never use in an actual game? Like which cards are just completely worthless because you only have a limited number of cards that you can put in your deck. Why, you know, which ones are you just gonna completely get rid of? And it seems like you could pretty easily create like a production possibilities curve for the Pokemon cards and figure out which ones should be ruled out. So maybe I want to create that production possibilities curve. Um, so, so that was just something that as I was thinking about this topic of Pokemon and what are some research topics that I would get into while I did it, I remembered that experience playing with him. Something that's interesting is that one of the interests I had listed earlier was just developing countries really broadly. And that was just way too broad. When I looked at that, I just didn't know even what to ask. But when I asked about Haiti, when I started diving into that, I was able to get a couple of questions that were on my mind with Haiti. Um, and finally, there was YouTube where 
these are just things that I think about with my channel, things I would like to understand here. You know, how do views evolve? How do content creators choose topics? That was actually one that came from a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago with someone talking about how people stream video games. How do people decide whether they're gonna stream Fortnite or Fall Guys or League of Legends? Like, if somebody moves over to that space, you know, what are the effects on that creator? And there's a whole lot of strategy that goes into those decisions, and I was interested in you know, is, that, is there a way I could look at that? And I thought, well, okay, that I'll, I'll put that down on the list. Some of these questions, I don't know how I'm gonna research, but that's not what I'm worried about right now. I'm worried about just creating questions. And then I worry about it later. You should not be thinking, can I actually do this right now? Right now, you should just be thinking about the things that you're interested in and then the questions you would like answered on that topic. Now that you've filled out a page of questions that you're interested in, you wanna start trimming it down. You wanna say, which of the questions that I asked are going to be the most likely to produce something pretty soon? And here are some ways that you might wanna trim that down. First, you wanna know what your goal is in terms of the contribution, okay? Remember, we're trying to move towards a contribution. We've started with interest. We've been focusing on that solely. Now we're moving towards contribution. What are the things that I wanna create? What are the things that I wanna learn? Which topics do I have the most likely chance of actually telling us something new. But if your goal is contribution, you also need to think about what is gonna be that final product. Is it gonna be something that you're gonna publish in a peer-reviewed journal, an academic journal that top economists are interested in getting into? Or is this something that you just wanna put up on your website and say, hey, I did this kind of thing, and here's proof that I learned something, and you're gonna try and get some attention to it, either by sharing it on Reddit, or maybe you share it on Twitter, some, some way like that. If you understand what your goal is, that's gonna help you understand which topics that you can go pursue. So for me, the topic that I want to pursue isn't gonna be something that ends up in a peer-reviewed journal. It's not gonna be held up to the highest academic standards just because I'm trying to demonstrate research processes for you. And so the end goal of this is gonna be something that I want the most amount of people to do. So the goal, my goal with this project is to write an essay by the end of the time I do all these videos. And that essay is gonna describe what I found related to this topic. So now that I understand that goal, I think actually I'm gonna rule out most of my Haiti questions. The Haiti questions, they're gonna be really involved. They're going to be require like a lot of work for me to make the contribution that would be worth that work. And so right now I'm not gonna pursue these. Maybe these are things that I wanna pursue later. I can put them in a notebook. I can put them in some sort of document that I can search online. But for now, I don't think I'm gonna pursue any of these Haiti ideas. Funny enough, like one of the Pokemon ideas might be worth pursuing, like that, that production possibilities curve. I, I think I might end up doing that one day and that would be something that I wouldn't send to a journal but would have fun writing on my website. Now I'm looking over the YouTube policies and I'm seeing some things that I think might work out. Again, this is gonna get to the data that I wanna collect. Like how am I going to do this and what is my end goal? Like I do want to understand YouTube better. And so it's gonna be, mm. I think you're gonna have this feeling too where you start thinking about questions and you wonder if you can actually do anything on that. And you need to push through that. You need to say, right now, I'm not worried about it. There are so many times where I've thought like, oh, there's no way I would be able to do this. And then I see friends who had like even more ridiculous ideas. They just had these, these huge ideas. And I said like, this is so silly that you're thinking about that. There's no way you're gonna get done. But because they had those ideas and they pursued them, they ended up making huge contributions, whereas I was always confined by what I thought was possible, which then confined me even more to just doing something really small. So it's good to think really big right now because there's no constraints. Just, just try and think as big as you can. So I've narrowed it down to three questions. Now what I wanna do is start thinking about what I would be able to demonstrate through doing this research because again, I'm, I'm guessing that you're the kind of person that wants to demonstrate some skills or develop some skills as you're working on this project. You're not so interested in getting a peer reviewed publication, right? Like that, we're not worried about that process right now. You wanna demonstrate some sort of understanding. And so I'm just gonna list under each of these questions what I expect to be able to talk about or to think about as I try to answer these questions. So now I've got my three questions and I've got the topics that I think that are gonna come up. So how do video views, views evolve? What I'm thinking about here is talking about competition and how competition on YouTube or on the creator space differs from like competition in maybe movies or television. 
television. Um, I think that could be a really interesting angle to go with this. Um, with content creators responding to YouTube policies, I'm thinking about incentives. Uh, what kind of incentives are we creating for creators? And this actually could be a really important question to answer with what's going on with the future of the economy, right? Like more people are getting online, they're participating in the creator economy. How do the policies shape the content that we get? How careful do we have to be about what we're creating? And then on the Pokemon card production possibilities frontier, you know, curve, whatever, I, I put data collection. That's not really a skill. Like I have to do that for the other two. And then I also put strategy. So I don't think this is gonna be one that really shows off what I want to show off right now. So already I'm leaning away to from the Pokemon card topic. I also think I might lean away from video views right now. And I think I'm gonna land on how do content creators respond to YouTube policies. So I'm less than 30 minutes into this process. I've already narrowed down my research topic pretty significantly. And I'm starting to get at like a vision of what this could become, but I still am not there yet. We need to get a little bit more specific on this. Otherwise, it's just a, a pretty broad thing. Now, I happen to know some of the policy changes that have happened recently. Just in my time, the things that have come up are uh, COPPA and ad role changes. So COPPA is Child Online Privacy Protection Act, I think is what the full thing is. And this was this concern that you know, YouTube was able to suggest videos to children and it was a big kerfuffle and last year in 2019, there were some issues about whether your channel was gonna be affected by policy changes YouTube was making. Another change just happened recently and that's when they started putting mid-roll ads on videos that were eight minutes long. So you used to have to make a video 10 minutes or longer if you wanted mid-roll ads, that is the ads that pop up in the middle of your video. Now they've changed it so that way if your video is eight minutes long, you can still qualify for those ads. So I, it'd be really interesting to see how people respond. Like, are you seeing a lot of people right there at that 10 minute mark uh, after before the change and then they actually shift down, they go to eight minutes. That, that'd be a really interesting behavioral change. And that actually, as I'm describing it, I want, I can see that that's gonna be like a really precise question that I could ask. Okay, so my question right now is how did YouTube creators respond to the change in mid-roll ads policy? So I'm seeing it evolve, but I think I'm not quite there yet because what I would like to do is narrow it down a little bit more to make sure that when I go research it, I can find it. And one of the questions that's popping up in my mind is how in the world am I going to measure this? Like there are just millions and millions of hours of content uh, uploaded like daily I might even be in the billions I forget what the exact numbers are but how am I going to go and track this down who who's in my sample I guess is what I'm thinking about and so I would like to have people who are maybe more sensitive to this so you definitely need people who are qualified for ads so I'm not gonna look at just random videos I want to look at people who have a track record as well so I want established creators um, I'm thinking out loud right now. So so maybe people who already have 100,000 subscribers, their silver play button, or maybe a million with their gold play button. Um, maybe I look at the top creators. Maybe I'm looking at like the top 100 creators. Um, maybe I'd have to find a list. Let's go ahead and just pull up a list and see if I've got something right here. So I pulled up this Wikipedia page on the most subscribed channels and I'm getting kind of like a mixed view from this. On the one hand, I'm seeing like really popular creators like PewDiePie, Mr. Beast, but then I also see a ton of musicians and um, just entertainment channels, people that I don't even think are going to be sensitive to this. So like Taylor Swift is on here. Taylor Swift does not care about YouTube ads when she's creating her music videos. So that's not gonna be a good person to target for this. I probably don't want them in my sample. So who do I get in there? You know, Mr. Beast on the other hand, he might be someone sensitive to this. So I do want him in the sample. I just realized that I covered up my timer as I've been working on this. We still got plenty of time. So what I'm gonna try to do is find like a list of YouTube channels that have more than a million subscribers, like, or, or maybe like in this range of 1 million to 5 million. I don't know. I'm gonna try and narrow the range. I don't know exactly yet, but I've got an idea that that's what I need to do. And then I'm gonna look at their video length. So really what I wanna know is how 
did video length change in response to the mid roll ads policy for creators with 1 million to 5 million uh, subscribers? So that's a really specific question. It's something that I can definitely pursue. And I think that's gonna be interesting. I think if I write about that, if I talk about it here, that's gonna be something that people are really interested in. And there's lots of economics involved in this question because you're responding to incentives. I really like this one. I think I may go with this. And this is great. Like this is not something that I thought of, right? Like, hey, I've still got a whole like 23 minutes to spare and I've got a research topic, a really specific research question just by going through this pretty simple process. If you do this, let me know in the comments below so that way I can steal your research ideas. I'm totally kidding right there. I just wanna know if this is working out for you and maybe we can give each other feedback in the comments. Uh, as I continue the series, you'll see more of these videos right here. We'll see you around.